Boom, we're gonna hit record just like that. Today, I'm gonna do a review of Jack Canfield's Success Principles. This is the first book that I read in my early 20s that kind of put me on. If you guys are feeling stuck, this is exactly the book that you guys wanna to start to begin to read because it's these actionable steps or principles that you're gonna take in order to change your life, change your mindset, and simply achieve your goals. So the first principle, let's get right into it, is take 100% responsibility for your life. Um, it may not be your fault that you're in your position. It may not be your fault that you are, you know, let's just say you grew up in a bad area. Let's just say your family never supported you. Let's just say you weren't as privileged as other people. And it's not your fault that you weren't as privileged, but it is your responsibility to change your outcomes. The first, as soon as you take full responsibility for your life, for your happiness, stop blaming other people around you, the more you can take control in your life. Okay, next step. Principle number two, be clear on your goals. Most people have vague or general ideas about success, like I wanna be happy or I want more money, but without clarity, you'll drift aimlessly and imagine trying to hit a target you can't really see. For me, my target would be to hit 500 subscribers on YouTube because I only have about 160 right now or something like that. And right now I think I'm touching shy of around 3,000 followers on Instagram. So a small goal towards hitting a specific target would be to hit 5,000 on Instagram. I believe I have 7,000 followers on TikTok and my goal is to hit 10,000 on TikTok. So now that I'm more specific on the goals that I want, I can get into the why I want it. The reason why is a bunch of reasons to provide value, to grow a personal brand and eventually monetize my situation to get out of my situation, work remote and escape this system and achieve financial freedom. Okay, because why wouldn't anybody want to do that? Image of a bullseye. Think of your goals as a target. The more precise you are, the better your chances of hitting it. Instead of saying, I want more money, get specific. Like, I want to earn $100,000 a year by the end of next year through my business. Or instead of saying, I want to get fit, say I want to lose 20 pounds in six months by working out four times a week. Like, these are called SMART goals. You want to be specific. specific. You want it to be measurable. You want it to be attainable. You want it to be relative to all your other goals and you need to have a time constraint on it, okay? So SMART goals, we'll write that down. It looks like this. So get a load of this. We got specific, measurable, achievable or attainable. It's gotta be realistic, guys. You can't say I wanna achieve a billion dollars by next year without having the actual skills on how to create a billion dollars in uh, income or revenue or whatever it is. If, if, you're, if you're overweight or you're really skinny, you can't have an unless, unrealistic expectation of putting on 50 to 100 pounds when you just started. And then we have uh, relevancy. You want it to be relative to your other goals. Example of that would be, for instance, I'm working on my barbering, I'm working on content creation, and I'm working on business, and all three of these things have an effect on each other. And then time bound. So when you set goals, when you set like a 90 day roadmap or a three month deadline or a one week deadline or a two week deadline, it becomes, it puts pressure on your goal. Because if you don't have a time bound goal, if no one's holding you accountable like this, this time sensitive date, then essentially you'll be giving yourself too much time to achieve this thing. You're going to be like, okay, well, I want to get fit and by, by any time I have the rest of my life to get fit. But if you tell yourself, Hey, I'm going to do this for It's pretty straightforward, guys. Come on, get specific, be smart. Let's get into number three. Okay, principle number three is actually pretty big. This is a big one, guys, because if you don't have this principle, then you're gonna set yourself up for failure. Very important principle. A lot of you guys already have this. Some of you guys may not. This is principle number three. We have believe it to achieve it. If you don't believe in yourself, you're only setting yourself up for failure. You have to be delusional in the sense that you think that you can achieve whatever it is that you set your mind to. When you tell yourself, I am not the type of person to do this, when you make these I statements and you put it out in there and you set, you put yourself in the box by telling yourself, like, you can't do the things that you want to do. Okay, I know this sounds really obvious, but there are people out there whose main roadblock is themselves. They haven't even gotten to level two because they can't conquer their own demons. And here is one of the biggest tips that is gonna help kind of relieve yourself in the sense 
of, of, of this trap. And it comes with this one tool that psychologists use um, called It is called CBT, Cognitive Behavior, Behavioral Therapy or Psychology. Okay, understanding cognitive behavioral therapy or psychology is going to teach you why you think the way you think and how to overcome that. Okay, so in the chart of cognitive behavioral therapy, we have what works from your beliefs to your thoughts to your feelings and to your actions. So like I was saying, I statements, when you make these I statements, your beliefs turn into your thoughts and when you keep talking like this, it affects your feelings and it affects your actions and you don't end up acting on it, okay? The same thing about identity, no pun intended, let's, run, let's write our name down, okay? This equals the etymology, I don't know how to spell that, etymology is identical entity. Okay, so when we look at identical and entity, we have a person, place, or thing, and identical means repetitive patterns, okay? The reason why I'm mentioning this is because it's only through repetitive patterns that you identify with a specific thing. Okay, so I was never a barber. I didn't start off just cutting hair. I didn't come out my, my mom's womb just like killing fades, right? I was never a boxer. I didn't pop out the womb just and give the doctor a fade with my hands. I didn't come out the womb like that. I had to pick up a pair of clippers. I had to take the risk. I had to believe that I could do it and say, and look at somebody else and go, hey, if that person could do it, I could do it. Like, what's the difference between them and me? Nothing. Imagine that. Imagine, like, you think that you can't make a certain amount of money or you think that you can't get a certain level of a fitness, a certain, a certain physique. There's 12-year-olds out there that are doing it. You mean to tell me that you can't, achieve more than a 12 year old Fuck. my camera my camera cut there are people on this planet that are less qualified less talented than you are that have what you want simply because they believe it and not only do they believe it they act on it right again i was saying i was never a boxer and i was never a barber i did it enough times not just for a week not just for a month not just for three months maybe a year until I started telling people that I was a barber, that I was a boxer, right? And the longer that you do that, it becomes your identity. So now, imagine you believe a certain thing. You are not a morning person. You are not a runner. You are not somebody who likes to eat healthy. You are not a self-employed entrepreneur. You are not whatever. This is, these are the statements that you are making. These are the thoughts you have and these are the feelings you have, right? But now, cognitive behavioral therapy Applying this method can literally heal traumas, can literally change the way you look at life. And if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Check this out. If you act on something every single day, eventually it will change your feelings. If you go to the gym every single day, eventually you'll say, hmm, I like this. I like this gym. You know what? I lost a pound. I'm looking kind of slimmer, right? I'm, I'm, I'm getting some muscle or whatever. Now your thoughts start to change. You know, maybe, maybe the gym isn't as bad as I thought. It's not as hard as I thought. Maybe the people at the gym are not as bad as I thought. And now your beliefs, you were never a lifter, but now you are. Now you're a gym rat. Now you're flexing in front of the mirror. Now you're taking selfies in the mirror without your shirt. So again, believe it to achieve it or believe it to achieve it. It's as simple as that. It's not as simple as that, but I hope that helps you understand why you're thinking the way that you're thinking. Once you understand the human behavior, once you understand the human psychology, and you understand why you think the way that you think, and there's a solution, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a type of person who wants to know the whys. You know, you tell me one plus one equals two, I wanna know why. Why does it equal two, okay? So when I learned about CBT, it helped me understand like the reality of life. Let's see. Principle number four. 
and this kind of goes into what I was saying with CBT is take action. No matter what. Take action no matter what. Let me look at my notes here, okay? The fourth principle is all about action. Success doesn't come to those who wait. It comes to those who take consistent, bold action. Even when you're scared or unsure, just take the next step. You'll learn and grow as you go. So this is something that I'm leaning into, okay? I'm not one new to the camera, but I, I never was. Again, I didn't come out the womb like vlogging. You know, vlogging wasn't a thing. I'm, I'm like, I don't look like it, but I'm 32. And you know, we didn't have like YouTube. I was before the YouTube era. And I'm just, I'm, I'm pretty upset that I'm getting started now. I wish I had gotten started back then. But hey, I'm taking action now, whatever. And I'm taking responsibility, whatever. So this is what, I, like, this is probably one of the most interesting aspects because when you lean into it, when you take that leap of faith, which is, spoiler alert, some of the other success principles down the road, um, it's through this action that you are gonna get better. You're not gonna start out perfect. And you have to embrace that fear. You have to let go of the judgment. And it's through that action, ready, fire, aim. Not ready, aim, fire. Don't think, like, obviously think about it, write your thoughts down and plan and strategize, but you can have all the strategi strategies in the world and without action, n it all goes to waste. You know, I used to be that kind of person where I needed to know exactly what workout routine I wanted to do which lifts I needed to do and what food I needed to eat in order to start. How crazy is that? I would spend months and like uh, getting paralysis by analysis and all that time wasted, I could have been doing push-ups, whatever it was, utilizing what was what I had and I would have seen results. There are people who don't have a camera like this, who don't have a camera like this, don't have a ring light that are filming on like an iPhone 5 that are still viral. And, and not that viral virality is the goal, but I'm just saying that they're getting results. We got some battery, I'm sweating. I feel like I'm performing in front of people. Taking action can feel scary. You're unsure of the outcome, you might fail or things might not go according to plan, but here's the thing. Inaction is the biggest killer of dreams. It's better to take imperfect action than to wait for the perfect moment because that moment might never come. And that goes back to ready, fire, aim. Start firing, like spray, and then adjust. Adjust the, what, what do you call that in first person shooters? The spray or whatever it is, right? You adjust after. Don't sit there waiting for the perfect shot and you know, the guy might turn around the corner and there you go, you didn't have the shot. We're referring to games like Modern Warfare, Call of Duty, that kind of stuff, whatever analogy you need, take action. On to principle number five, especially when you're younger guys, oh my gosh. Know who your fucking friends are, surrounders. I wish you guys could see this better. I wish I had one of those sharp black fucking expo markers. Principle number five is surround yourself around the right people. I could go on about this all day. The best thing about being a barber, for instance, is imagine this. You're a 20 year old kid. You come into a shop. You've got the owner and you've got some OGs and some other guys maybe around your age and, and, a, and a younger apprentice, younger than you. You might have a little skill. Maybe you are the apprentice, okay? You, let's just say you are the apprentice, okay? You're the little caterpillar and you come into this room with people who are in a cocoon and who have their wings, full on wings. Not only is the owner gonna tell you what you need to do in order to be successful, he's gonna micromanage you, tell you to fucking sweep up, clean after your tools, you know, um, you look your customers in the eye when they shake their hand, you know, stop slouching, all this kind of stuff, right? And you have OGs that are gonna be talking to you about finance, talking to you about hustle, where to invest your money. You have your clients. You have clients that are like doctors, lawyers, cops, criminals, judges, that are all sharing their stories with you. But this is a place where you, you come to work, you go home, and, and you know, whatever. This is just an example of surrounding yourself around the right people. 
imagine the impact that every single one of these individuals are gonna have around you. And this goes especially to you young guys that are hanging out with people that don't have your best interests. You know, I'm gonna share a personal story with, my, with you guys, is I wanted to be a rapper when I was younger. I, li I actually have videos, I took them down, and they, were, they weren't bad actually, they were fucking sick. Um, I wanted to be a rapper, but the people that I was surrounding myself around that, you know, ha live that rapper life, cocaine, alcohol, fucking women, clubs, late nights, none of that was helping me get me to where I wanted to be. You know what, you know what real rappers do? You know what real rappers who rap about lean and drugs and money and cars and clothes, you know what they really do? They go home, they write and they do business, they go to the studios, they meet people, they network, they show up to events, they strategize, they are like the most successful people on countless and countless time, time and time again will tell you in interviews that they don't actually live the life that they are preaching about. Because think about it, if they were doing that all the time, the shit that they're showing you, if they were doing that all the time, they, they, it would be impossible for them to achieve the things that they want to achieve. It takes a shit ton of strategizing. It doesn't just, you don't just do this and party and fucking make it. No, you gotta hop on planes, you got people that manage you, you become a business. Anyways, <clears throat> surround yourself around the people because even butterflies know not to associate with caterpillars. Another example is the boxing gym. I go to the gym, the, the things that they're trying to peer pressure me to do is to run an extra 5K, is to run my 5K sooner, is to, to stand in front of my opponent and fucking throw down. Not to take another hit, stay a little bit longer, have another shot, you know? There's a time and place for those things, but you wanna surround yourself around people. You wanna create a mastermind and a network of people who want the exact same things that you want. Because when those are the sum of your closest friends, then you are gonna be a result of your closest friends. If you like this video, if you like content like this, follow for part two. I'm gonna keep doing a series, maybe five principles at a time, 10 principles at a time as I get faster, but um, Stick around, hit that follow, hit that like, hit that comment, hit that share. Let me know what you think. Is this doo-doo advice or is this actually relatable advice to you and that you could apply this now? You already know what it is.